So here we go. Sorry, we got a little phone call in the middle of that video, right in the exciting part where Grandpa Joe is dancing all around and shouting hip hip for hip hip hooray for Charlie because he brought home the golden ticket. <sighs> Sorry about that. Let's continue on and see what happens. At this point, the door opened and Mr. Bucket walked into the room. He was cold and tired and he looked it. All day long, he had been shoveling snow in the streets. Cripes, he cried, what's going on in here? It didn't take them long to tell him what had happened. I don't believe it, he said. It's not possible. Show him the ticket, Charlie, shouted Grandpa Joe, who was still dancing around the floor like a, a de in his striped pajamas. Show your father the fifth and last golden ticket in the world. Let me see it, Charlie, Mr. Bucket said, collapsing into a chair and holding out his hand. Charlie came forward with the precious document. It was a very beautiful thing, the golden ticket, having been made, so it seemed, from a sheet of pure gold, hammered um, out almost to the most thinnest of paper. On one side of it, printed by some clever method in jet, jet black letters, was the invitation itself from Mr. Wonka. Read aloud, said Grandpa Joe, climbing back into bed again at last. Let's all hear exactly what it says. Mr. Bucket held the lovely golden ticket up close to his eyes. His hands were trembling slightly, and he seemed to be overcome by the whole business. He took several deep breaths. Then he cleared his throat <clears throat> and said, all right, <clears throat> I'll read it. Here we go. Greetings to you, the lucky finder of the golden ticket from Mr. Willy Wonka. I shake you warmly by the hand. Tremendous things are in store for you. Many wonderful surprises await for you. Now I do invite you to come to my factory and be my guest for just one whole day. You and all others who are lucky enough to find my golden tickets, I, Willy Wonka, will conduct you around the factory myself showing you everything that there is to see. And afterwards, when it is time to leave, you will be escorted home by, by a procession of large trucks. These trucks, I can promise you, will be loaded with enough delicious edibles to last you and your entire household for many years. If at any time thereafter you should run out of supplies, you have only to come back to the factory and show this golden ticket and I shall be happy to refill your cupboard with whatever you want. In this way, you will be able to keep yourself supplied with tasty morsels for the rest of your life. But this is by no means the most exciting thing that will happen on the day of your visit. I am preparing other surprises that are even more marvelous and more fantastic for you and for all my beloved golden ticket holders, mystic and marvelous surprises that will entrance, delight, intrigue, astonish, perplex you and beyond, perplex you beyond measure. And in your wildest dreams, you could not imagine that such, such things could happen to you. Just wait and see. And now, here, here are your instructions. The day I have chosen for the visit of the first is, is the first day in the month of February. On this day and no other, you must come to the factory gates at 10 o'clock sharp in the morning. Don't be late. And you are allowed to bring with you either one or two members of your own family to look after you and to ensure that you don't get into any mischief. One more thing, be certain to have this ticket with you. Otherwise, you will not be admitted. Signed, Willy Wonka. Pretty cool. The first day of February, cried Mrs. Bucket, but that's tomorrow. Today is the last day of January. I know it is. Cripes, said Mr. Bucket. I think you're right. You're just in time, shouted Grandpa Joe. There's not a moment to lose. You must start making preparations all 
at once. Wash your face, comb your hair, scrub your hands, brush your teeth, blow your nose, cut your nails, polish your shoes, iron your shirt, and for heaven's sake, get all that mud off your pants. You must get ready, my boy. You must get ready for the biggest day of your life. Now, don't, don't, over, don't overexcite yourself, Grandpa, Mrs. Bucket said, and don't fluster poor Charlie. We must all try to keep very calm. Now, for the first thing to decide is this, who is going to go with Charlie to the factory? I will, shouted Grandpa Joe, leaping out of bed once again. I'll take him. I'll look after him. You leave it to me, <laughs> Mrs. Bucket smiled, the old man, and she turned to her husband and said, how about you, dear? Don't you think you ought to go? Well, Mr. Bucket said, pausing to think about it. No, I'm not so sure that I should. But you must. There's no must about it, my dear, Mr. Bucket said gently. Mind you, I'd love to go. It'll be tremendously exciting. But on the other hand, I believe that the person who really deserves to go most of all is Grandpa Joe himself. He seems to know more about it than we do. Provided, of course, that he feels well enough. Yippee! shouted Grandpa Joe, seizing Charlie by the hands and dancing around the room. Well, he certainly seems well enough, Mrs. Bucket said, laughing. Yes, perhaps you're right after all. Perhaps Grandpa Joe should be the one to go with him. I certainly can't go myself and leave the other three old people all alone in bed for a whole day. Hallelujah! yelled Grandpa Joe. Praise the Lord! And at that point, there came a loud knock on the front door. Mr. Bucket went to open it, and the next moment, swarms of newspaper men and photographers were pouring into the house. They had tracked down the finder of the fifth golden ticket, and now they all wanted to get the full story of for the front pages the next morning. For several hours, there were a complete pandemonium in the little house, it must have been nearly midnight before Mrs. or Mr. Bucket, Bucket was able to get rid of them so that Charlie could go to bed. Whew, how exciting. Okay.